Welcome to the Annihilation of Flat Earth, Episode 2, Isaiah's Ball. Welcome back to another episode of Annihilation of the Flat Earth. This is episode 2 and in this episode we're going to be covering Isaiah's Ball. Now if you don't know this subject it concerns two verses in Isaiah. The first one is where it uses the word ball and the second one it uses the word circle. Now I'll just read the verse Isaiah 22 18. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. So the flat earthers say that the word ball here, if the earth was indeed a globe, that the same word would be used in the Isaiah verse, chapter 40, verse 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. So the argument being that when it says, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, the argument is that the word circle is describing a circle and not a ball. Because in Isaiah 22 18, they use the English word ball. Therefore, the conclusion being made that the Hebrew word for ball is in Isaiah 22 18. And if indeed the earth was a globe, then Isaiah 40 22, where it says circle, it would instead use the Hebrew word dur. And there's a meme going round saying, Isaiah knows the difference between a ball and a circle, and the question is asked, do you? Well, do you know the difference between a ball and a circle? Let's find out, because all is not as it seems. So let's do a search for the word ball. KJV version. And it brings up Isaiah 22:18. Now, this is the only reference in the King James that says ball. So let's do another search. Circle. And you get one result. And that's indeed the other verse, Isaiah 40, 22. So let's examine both of these verses here. So as you can see here in the verse, I've highlighted the relevant word. This is the Hebrew number for it in the Strong's Dictionary. And the words that that Hebrew word encompasses is the like a ball. Now you'll notice that the like is in italics. That's because of the limitations of the English language. A word in italics generally has to be added in order for the English to make sense coming from the Hebrew. So the Hebrew for the word ball that's used is 1754. And it's dur, okay, and that means a circle, ball, or pile, ball, turn, roundabout. So the word ball actually occurs three times in the King James, once in Isaiah 22, 18, Ezekiel 24, 5, and it's rendered as burn, and also Isaiah 29, verse 3. And what does that say? It says, I will camp against thee round about. And there we have our word, 1754, which is rendered ball in Isaiah 29.3. Here it's rendered as thee round about. So, I will camp against thee round about, which means to encircle the camp. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. And if you know our English, a roundabout, the children's playground apparatus, what does that do? It spins round and round. So why is it rendered roundabout here? Why is ball rendered roundabout? Well, it's exactly the same as a circle, because the word for ball that's used in Isaiah 22, verse 18, 
it actually means a circle. So is it possible that a circle, as it's rendered in Isaiah 40, verse 22, is it possible that circle, round, and ball can mean the same thing? A sphere, after all, is a three-dimensional circle. It is the same shape. So Ezekiel 24, 5, take the choice of the flock and burn. That's the word we're looking for. Also the bones. What does it mean? So here it says it's from the root 1752. Now, when you look this up, you'll notice something really odd about all this here that I've highlighted. None of this changes, not even the little dots that you can see. So let's just do this. Look up 1752. The text down here changes, but this doesn't. It's the same word. A primitive root properly to gyrate or move in a circle, that is to remain, dwell. Well, why is that to remain? Well, because if you go round and round in circles, you're basically staying in the same place. That's why when you're lost, you just end up going round in circles. Everybody knows that phrase. So remember that I said that this word is, uh, it means dwell. So the word dwell is actually used quite a lot in the Bible. So what's the difference between this rendering and all these? Couldn't they have used the same word for dwell in all these instances that you're seeing on the screen right now, highlighted in yellow? What's the difference? Well, as you remember, it's about gyrating or moving a circle to remain, dwell. So, what's the difference? It's the movement. It's the implied movement here. So, when, it, when you read the verse again, He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball. Now, remember, the word for ball here, it's not just saying ball, it's the like a ball. And it's to specifically convey the violent tossing and turning that is previously just spoken about. Because what happens when you throw a ball? Well, it spins and it keeps on spinning until its momentum ends. So I'm going to read to you an excerpt from John Gill, Dr. John Gill's Exposition of the Bible. Now this was published for the first time in 1746. So he will surely violently turn and toss thee, and then here is John Gill's, Dr. John Gill's commentary. Or wrapping, he will wrap thee with a wrapping, as anything is wrapped up close and round, either to be commodiously carried, or more easily tossed. Rolling, he will roll thee with a rolling. This is just alternative translations to violently turn and toss thee. That is, roll thee over and over again, till brought to a place appointed. So God is thrown out Shebna into another land, like a ball into a large country, where there's nothing to stop it, and being cast with a strong hand runs a great way. So, hurled out of his place into a distant country as a ball, well wrapped, could be thrown at a great distance by a strong arm. So, dure, the word, exactly the same as 1754, is 1752. A circle, ball, or pile, turn, round about, and again, properly to gyrate or move in a circle. So, it's the spinning tumbling, tossing and turning action that's to be conveyed here. This is not appropriate to use in Isaiah 40.22 to describe the earth because that would be descriptive of tumbling or movement, gyration and that's not what this verse here, Isaiah 40.22 is talking about. It's talking about the shape of the earth. And that's what this series is focusing on, the shape of the earth, not whether 
heliocentrism is true or not, not whether the earth is moving or not. This is purely the shape of the earth. So it doesn't end there though. If we go and look at these other words that precede ball, toss and turn, 6802. Here we see that this is a ball or to toss from 6801 to wrap that is roll or dress, violently turn. So you've got the same theme here throughout the whole sentence. That is something that is very common in Hebrew. That's why it's uh, wrapping, he will wrap thee with a wrapping. Now this is terrible English, but in Hebrew, that's exactly how it goes. So again, I just want to restate it. This whole verse is to convey spinning or violent turning, tumbling as if God was throwing you like a ball into another country. Because that's exactly what's been said. Now it's not appropriate to use this for Isaiah 40.22 because it's not conveying shape. It's supposed to be conveying movement. So let's tackle the circle in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle. So the Hebrew word is chug and it is a circle or a circuit or a compass. Okay, but it is used to describe something that's spherical because a sphere is a circle. There's no getting around that. A sphere is a circle. Any kid could tell you that. You show them a ball, they'll say it's round, it's a circle. Let's look at an Italian Bible and how this is translated. Global Della Terra. So that's your circle of the earth. Global translation, Italian, globe in English, orb. Earth, terror, ball. What do you know? Weird, eh? What about Latin? Gyrum? Well, let's translate that into English. So here is the English translation of gyrum, and that's about. So this is very similar to the actual word for ball that you find in Isaiah 22.18. As you remember, it says, ball, turn, or round, about. So there's more similarities between the word ball and circle between these two verses than flat earthers even realise. Flat earthers insist that there are two entirely different words and they have no similarities between sphere and a circle. But that's just crazy because as you can see right here, the first definition of the word dua is a circle. So in the Latin Vulgate it was gyrum, but what about other languages? In German it's the word kreis. So let's find out the definition of that word in German. So here we go, we'll just copy and paste kreis and English is circle. So here we go. You can see that here in German, circle, circuit, district, cycle, round, sphere, and there's the word crease for sphere. That's pretty excellent, isn't it? Do you think the Germans know the difference between a sphere and a circle? Well, it seems that their word for circle is interchangeable with sphere. Let's see what the Spanish Bible says. Okay, so here we are, Isaiah 40, 22. El Globo, and that's translated from Chug. Which, as you know, from the Flat Earth memes, is circle. In Spanish, it's El Globo. The point I'm trying to make is that the word chug is indeed interchangeable with sphere, and it does represent a sphere also. Just as you've seen in the German language as well. But let's just Google that, get the proper translation for you, copy and paste. So here global in Spanish is detected as balloon in English and here we have globe, ball, orb, 
globo, balloon, air balloon. You see? An orb is a sphere, a ball is a sphere, and a globe is a sphere. And here we have Isaiah 40.22 in the Dewey Rames Bible, and they translate it as the globe of the earth, which is a translation from the Latin Vulgate that you seen earlier, and it was first published in 1609, and I do believe there was no such thing as NASA in 1609.